Thanks so much for the tour, the background, and the guidance, and, and of course for your extraordinary leadership on um, uh, this issue that uh, I think many believe is, uh, is the most significant issue that we uh, as human beings face uh, in our world today. Um, what an amazing place you all have the opportunity to, uh, to work in and, uh, and to study. It's just absolutely gorgeous, iconic. I must say this is the probably the most interesting place I've ever had the opportunity to give a speech. Uh, and uh, uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and it was um, uh, quite exciting and interesting to see the Einstein Tower. Uh, I tend to come back on a sunny day and, uh, and look forward to that as well. Clearly the success that we saw in Paris was really the sum total of many, many conversations like that and months and months of, of hard work and negotiations. And thank you for mentioning uh, John Kerry because this is an issue that has been, um, he's really, uh, I think he and Al Gore are probably among American politicians were really the first to embrace climate change as a, an existential issue and uh, uh, and so it was very important for him to be here and to have a uh, to be in Paris and mm. to have a hand in that. We all are indebted actually to the United States for this leadership. Uh, I met Sean Kerry a long time ago, several times actually in Bali for example 2007 it was one of the cops and we had a very good interaction. He asked me about the scientific issues and so on. And he immediately felt he's one of those very rare politicians who fully understands the scope of the challenge uh, when it comes to global warming, for example. And I have been in Paris, uh, so I attended as a member of the German delegation, and I felt his sort of leadership everywhere, really. Uh, it was absolutely clear when the really hard issues had to be resolved that there was a major influence by the United States, a progressive, a positive influence, and he was the man who, to do it, uh, so he did a great job. The, uh, the interesting thing about the agreement in Paris is, in many respects, the work has just begun. Uh, the COP21 agreement set forth, as you all know, an ambitious vision for a global approach to the challenge of climate change. It successfully navigated a range of difficult issues by building in both flexibility for parties to take into account their national circumstances and capabilities, and a robust common system of transparency. I think there's an immediate thing clearly on, uh, you know, how to, to change and to advance the energy mix clearly, renewable energies, which were invented in the United States, but later adopted by Germany through the feed-in tariff scheme and so on. So now we are ahead a little bit. I'm sure the US will catch up. So there will be many questions about storage and things like that, smart grids. But I think uh, a real challenge, uh, whenever you analyze uh, the transition to sustainable energy and sustainable uh, sort of economy is uh, the transportation sector. Uh. The Germany is, in a sense, world leader in manufacturing cars. On the other hand, in the United States, the, the weird and crazy ideas uh, are born, and I think we should team up, because we find, unless we quickly solve this transportation problem, which is still based on fossil fuels, uh, we will not be able to deliver on the Paris target. So it's something like a transatlantic innovation alliance led by the US and Germany is something I would envisage. We are very honored that the ambassador spent quite some time here, but in particular, we were all delighted by the way he interacted uh, with the questions raised by the public. So that was very thoughtful but it was also very candid, actually. So I think we had a lot of fun here together and we look forward to have more fun together.